we're going to pivot, if we can, here to uh, a packed primary lineup happening on Tuesday where many will see highly competitive races in five key states, Arizona and Kansas and Michigan, Missouri and in Washington. Yeah, the race taking center stage on Tuesday is going to be Arizona's GOP gubernatorial primary where Trump endorsed Carrie Lake. She's going to go head to head with the current governor, Doug Ducey, a former vice president, Mike Pence, backing Karen Taylor Robson. This is yet another example of Mike Pence hedging against one of the endorsements of his former boss. Um, who will come out victorious? Let's welcome in our panel to discuss this. Chairman of the committee to defeat the president, Ted Harvey, Republican strategist and founder of Pocketbook Project, Jennifer Nasser. And with the Black Leadership Network, we have Donna Jackson. Ted, Jennifer, Donna, welcome to all three of you and good to have you with us. Um, this is a really interesting race. We know, as we just mentioned, that Trump backed Kerry Lake, uh, but you have rival endorsements in this gubernatorial race. Um, Donna, we'll kick it off with you. How do you think that's going to play out? You know, I think that the main thing we're going to see is you're going to have good conservative candidates backing good conservative principles. Um, you know, Trump did a lot for the American people, and I think that people realize that. So if any candidate that will uh, echo those principles are go is going to have a great chance of being able to uh, come out victorious in this race. Ted, if I can again focus there in the state of Arizona, the gubernatorial race that we were focused on there. Carrie Lake's Carrie has, Carrie Lake has been in, in the uh, in the media rounds, right, uh, making the rounds, campaigning for herself there. Uh, she has the endorsement of, of President Trump, um, but her challenger is coming out and, and kind of digging up her past politically, if you will, on who she's uh, pushed for before. Um, in terms of maybe being a Democrat before, being a Republican today, is she just doing this to, to gain votes or to gain power? Um, these are some of the questions that, again, as you see in politics, it gets a little little sticky. Um, does Kerry Lake still come out on top despite what Karen Taylor uh, Robson puts in the spotlight, if that makes sense, Ted? You bet. I, I think for sure she's going to win. The, the most recent poll that came out last week had her up by nine points. I, I think that she is going to win because she is boldly coming out and saying that we had problems in the 2020 elections that we need to look into, especially in Arizona. We need to reform the Arizona election laws. She supports securing the borders and making sure that we are not being overrun by illegal immigrants down on the border. The Trump endorsement is going to be huge. You look at all of the um, candidates across the country in primaries that Trump has won. I think he's about 120 to 10 right now. Um, if if I were a candidate out there, I would want Donald Trump in stores, endorsement. And and Carrie Lake has been working every single day to support Donald Trump and, and his policies. And I, Trump is endorsing her because of that. And I think it's, she's going to come across as a winner. And Jennifer, um, to, to perhaps his point on this, the Trump endorsement, what have we learned about it? We know that it was uh, the small difference maker in that Pennsylvania Senate GOP primary where Dr. Oz gained the edge over Dave McCormick. Um, and what are some of the issues at play when it comes to the Arizona race? So, you know, I guess I look at it a little bit differently than um, both Donna and Ted in that I was a former party chairman. And so at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you win. I don't really care about endorsements. I don't care who's more popular as far as the endorser. What I care about is putting the best candidate out there who is talking about the issues that are going to resonate with the voters who are voting. And that vo those voters in a general election are not just Republican voters. Those are the independent voters. Those are the Democratic voters that are so sick and tired of the liberal policies that they want someone that they trust that they can vote for. And so in this election, I think it's very interesting to see that the, both the vice president and the president have endorsed here. But at the end of the day, I think that everyone is missing the main point. We can't get in on the policy discussions if we are not winning. And so whoever is endorsing, if we can't win in a general election against the Democrat, then there's there's no conversation at all. 
But there is a strategy, Donna, right, in terms of, look, these, uh, Trump doesn't have to give out an endorsement. He could sit back and continue on with his life. Mike Pence doesn't have to give an endorsement. He could sit back with his family, et cetera, and go on. But they do choose to. And when they choose to, they are for separate candidates. Do you read anything into that, Donna? You know, I, I don't, but I, what the really the main thing is that we cannot have what we're seeing in D.C. right now. You had 17 conservatives voting to give out pork projects. You have 17 Republicans that are now going against what the American people want in their spending to increase inflation. So I think that the primary principle is that we need to make sure that we have good policy makers and those that stick to the conservative agenda. And you're not seeing that in a lot of these candidates. Yeah. I think what's also interesting to put into this conversation, maybe to Jennifer's point, is when I was speaking to voters in Pennsylvania's primary, a lot of people were telling me that the endorsement didn't mean much to them. They were looking at the candidate. They were looking at the issues. And speaking of one of the big issues, uh, there's certainly a lot of contention on Capitol Hill right now with Democrats wanting to put forward this reconciliation bill that would be spending more money and increasing taxes. Uh, Ted Harvey, I'll pick this up with you on um, Democrats maybe and, and obviously focusing on the issues of the midterm elections and how this might play with voters right now that are experiencing record inflation. Sure. I think the Democrats are desperate um, because this administration has been such a failure over the last 18 months that they're desperate to go into the election and, and buy as many votes as they possibly can. And that's what this new bill that supposedly is coming forward is, is nothing more than to try to buy votes. It's not going to improve the economy. If anything, it's going to increase inflation because it's more government pork barrel spending. And it's only to try to go after certain individual groups that they're trying to win votes with. And I, I don't think the, the the American people are that naive to see what the Democrats are trying to do. I don't think it's going to work. And um, I think we're going to continue to have a pretty substantial red, red wave in November, and the Republicans are going to take back the House and the Senate. All right. Ted Harvey, Jennifer Nasser, Donna Jackson, appreciate all three of you. Thanks for being with us.